Hello and welcome gamers to Halo Clans for today's interview. Today's interview is with Archivex, leader of Armored Federation. Uh, so why don't you give us a little bit of your clan history? Uh, well, as of March 2nd of 2015, I was making the Armored Federation. Beforehand, I was a colonel within the United Union Federation Army. Before that, I was in the Air Force, but I was in some controversial matter. I don't want to get into that right away, but later on, maybe another time. Um, but anyway, um, it was me for a while, and then I picked up upon somebody that went by the gamer tag Vermilion. Now, he was not necessarily the leader of E100, he was a member of E100, but he had one of the uh, he was one of the few people that had a Vermilion gamer tag, and apparently, all those people came from B100. Um, anyway, I nominated him to be our general of the army within Gen 1, and that lasted for a while. I think two months into the situation, we had some problems here and there, because MCC was a broken game. We all started on the Master Chief Collection. I refused to go back to Reach or anything like that, because I just had enough with it. I wanted to, you know, delve into the next-gen console experience, so that's what I was doing. I was staying because I did that. I wanted to do that. Um, around that time, within Gen 1, we had 19 members or so. Um, we had a little bit of a tumble because one of the members we had wanted to express individuality because he was a competitive player. But then we kind of shut him down on that idea and he caused an entire clan to protest. And the clan overnight, the population declined by 95% leaving only myself and Vermilion. Took a break from it for a while. Back in October of, well, yeah, 30th of October of 2015, um, we restarted and we made Gen 2 um, Halo 5. We got a few people. Vermilion wasn't around for that much of the uh, given period of time that we were operating and regaining people within the clan. Um, so therefore, he was no longer the general of the army. And we had a few structural changes. So. General of the Army was now known as the Strategos of the Army, and we had a little bit of a structural modification. Instead, um, we put down seven open seats, which some of them are still not filled up to this day, within the Stratocracy. Um, the Stratocracy is basically our power source, basically, uh, to make clan-wide decisions. We all discuss things together. Uh, basically, the Stratocracy holds seven military chiefs, including myself, within the power seats to make decisions for the entire clan. Of course, we take into consideration of all of our enlisted and NCOs and officers, so it never becomes a problem, nor have we had any problems with the decision-making process because, you know, it's just, at the moment, there are three of us, um, one of them being our current strategos and one being a captain and myself. Um, anyway, we've been going through a lot. We've been kind of like, I don't know how to say it. Like we've been on the slippery slope for a while with our members. Um, we would go back down to like 16 people and then we would regain people and then we would go down. But at this point, we are kind of at a peak with 24 members and we're anticipating to get 30 by the end of next week. So um, at the moment, some of those cadets that we've just recruited today are actually in a basic training session. Um, I don't know if you can actually hear them because my microphone is also with me. I do apologize if that is occurring at the moment, but anyway. Um, but so far, we're doing okay, but at the same time, I feel like we can do better. All right, well, that kind of wrapped up uh, the next question of your member count, so let's skip ahead to the next one. Uh, what are your current clan goals? Current clan goals? Well, obviously, um, the only goals I really have at this point is to defend what we think is right, and obviously I think everyone deserves a fair chance of, you know, exposure within the clan community. Um, I actually want to help other clans get to a placement where they are capable of, you know, earning a reputation for themselves, and, you know, I will be more than happy to do that for anybody, really, if they want to do that, if they have the ambition. Clearly I'm not going to help anybody that has little to no ambition whatsoever. Um, we also want to express a, I wouldn't say supremacy within media, but we're actually working on some media projects right now. Um, I can't really declassify anything at this point in time, but um, basically what we would like to do 
not necessarily, like I said, supremacy within our media, but we would like to have a media structure that stands out to the public. Um, we also would like to defend community values such as uh, professionalism, um, certain things like that just matter to us because, you know, we're in a client community where there isn't really much professionalism left. Um, in my dearest opinion, I really don't think there's much professionalism because you see people, um, you know, poaching, uh, math thieves, etc. I mean, of course, there's no way to combat that, maybe poaching, but math thieves, um, I really can't say much. But then again, I mean, I don't really worry about it because if you've worked really hard on a map and someone takes it and tries to say it's their own, I mean, yeah, people can take it as an insult, but for me, I mean, I think of it as a compliment nowadays. I mean, I used to be like that, but if we have our enlisted members or myself working on something so powerful in image and structure to the point where someone wants to take it and use it, that's pretty much a compliment for us. Yeah, and plus not to mention, you know, if you got a map that you spend a lot of time on, you obviously know the ins and outs a little bit better than everybody exactly. else. And even, even if they did use it against you, you're just like, I know all the back doors. <laughs> and sometimes there will be people that may, you know, perceive things a little bit differently than you have if you were the original map developer and they try and give some explanation that's different from yours. And your explanation will make a lot more sense than theirs. So, I mean, if it ever comes down to a point in time where I can find somebody, I'm not really going to, you know, bash upon them, which I really have not had any instances of that happening whatsoever. But anyway, um, that's about it for our values. I mean, we just want to, you know, belong in a sense where, you know, we can do things just like any other clan, but also at the same time, um, conserve some of the values that we see as precious. What has uh, been your toughest fight so far? <sighs> toughest fight? More like biggest mistake. I, upon impulse, was under the impression to join the Axis Powers Coalition, and we all know how this went. Um, originally, I was joining because of my ally, Orta, Ricky Lane. Um, he told me that we would advance, revolutionize certain aspects of raids, raid technology, and etc. And I trusted Ricky for that because, you know, He's good at what he does when it comes to forging. I love every bit of work that he has contributed to, to the community. I mean, way back on MCC, he even gave public domain maps to people that weren't capable of making their own maps. And I, I smiled upon that. Um, but anyway, he was the main reason why I joined, but there were two others that were getting themselves into trouble. And then I was dragged into trouble while I was, you know, sleeping. So, that whole war that happened with the UCA and Axis, to me, in my opinion, was a big mistake. Because really, what was the Armored Federation gaining out of it? Absolutely nothing. It was embarrassing. The entire clan, it was degrading our reputation little by little. And I just couldn't take it anymore. And another factor kicked in. We weren't even ready for, for combat. And do you really think we could go up against a big clan like Exodus or UNE at the time? or even vast contagions clan. I did not have the confidence. Maybe some people within my clan, maybe my allies did, but I just did not see it possible. So therefore I withdrew from you know, the UCA and Axis Powers War. I withdrew my placement within the Axis Powers. And I left on a good note. But some people may take it as otherwise. <laughs> but that is probably the biggest mistake heading on into a coalition without knowing its true intentions. Even if you were told by your ally what was originally going to happen and it never fell through. That's why it's always important to start your own coalitions versus joining another one. Yeah, and besides, it didn't, let me just say, it did not have any flow of communication. It was just so scattered and patchy. It, I just couldn't stand it. I didn't know what was going on. Everyone hid something from each other, and I didn't like that. So, I mean, more like a fight, more like a mistake, if anything. All right. Uh, do you have any allies outstanding that you would like to mention? Well, yes. Orta, led by Ricky Lane, and we're actually working on an alliance right now with somebody else. 
I'm not going to mention the name because it's not solidified in black and white. So unfortunately I can't do that, but the only outstanding ally we have at this point, other than Fairy Tail Guild, is Orta. Alright. Um, now the complete opposite of that question. Do you have any opposition outstanding? I cannot disclose anything at this time. So yes but no. I cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny that we have any opposition. So Okay. To answer your question, technically yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how does your uh, ranking structure work? Well, we go by at first it goes by traditional military ranks. It goes by private, private two, private first class, corporal, sergeant, staff sergeant, etc. But once you get into the officer ship ranks, um, you'll see a little bit of differentiation. There's different levels of captain, so it goes from captain one to three and then Major 1 through 2, and then we have Field Majors, which have special permissions for combat motives, um, as well as Force Colonel, we have Commander. Those certain ranks pop out because they are given initiatives that no other enlisted or officer has. Um, only a few hand-picked people will make those ranks. And then you have the Archon the Strategos, which I, myself, am the Archon, clearly. Going more into that, uh... Like, how does ranking up work within your clan? Like, is it just like peer evaluation no. or experience based? Let me let me just give a little bit. Excuse me. Let me give you a list of everything that we give as far as an opportunity to, you know, get promoted in the clan. Um, basically, if an individual has the highest desire to get promoted, they can do a variety of things. They can stay on. They can go beyond the line of their duty. They can help people that need help, haven't been on for a while, need some refreshers. Um, basically refreshment, like on material that we teach in basic training or etc. Um, we also have a mentorship program where basically an enlisted member will take the mentorship responsibilities with a new cadet and they will get promoted. And at the end of their term within basic training and, you know, they're their specialization training, they will be promoted all the way up to private first class. And this is a new program that we just opened up recently. Um, only few people I have brought in because I see potential in them going up. Um, other people, I have to get them, you know, I have to get acquainted with them, I have to get to know them, obviously. But getting promoted, we actually have a huge list on our website on armorfederation.weebly.com on how to get promoted. Um, it doesn't happen right away. Why? Because I don't hand ranks out like it's Halloween candy. I don't do that. Many other clans have, but I will not be one of those people. And this is a good thing because it brings meaning with things. It brings value upon everyone. And everyone should be proud of where they stand, whether they're a private, whether they are a private first class or a specialist. Right. But if anybody would like to see you, you can simply go on our website and see where you can, or excuse me, how you can get promoted. Which will be listed down in the description below for everyone who wants to do it the easy way instead of typing it in. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so moving on, uh, what's your current raid record at? Well, excluding practice raids, um, we had one tie and a loss. Practice raids, we had two wins. Exactly. So, um, we actually, I would count in the loss because we did a practice raid with Vast at one point. So technically the raid with practice raids would be two, two wins, one tie, two losses. So, I mean, it, it, it kind of makes sense because, you know, I mean, we haven't really been, you know, interactive with the community as I, you know, stood at one point to say that we would love to interact with every and all clans within the community but we we're just not ready it seems like it, it's just my dearest opinion like i i don't feel ready i don't think any of my ncos are ready um i could be wrong with some of them but we have officers that are very eager to go out in combat yeah which, everybody really wants to be a little bit more active in the community but the yeah, fact of life is right you have to go to work you have to work that nine to five yeah and uh, and that's why I'm not confident. Yeah, because it, it, it just consumes <laughs> every bit of your time. <laughs> yeah, it does, unfortunately. But 
I mean, I am more than happy to do practice raids with people when we have enough members and capacity that is, you know, online, active, etc. I mean, as long as we have the people to do it, we are more than happy to do, you know, a practice raid, friend of raid with anybody. Um, but at this point in time, I mean, yeah, we can do practice raids with anybody if they would really want to. I mean, if anyone here is interested in doing that on Halo 5 Guardians, let me know. You can message me, you can send in the, um, perhaps an alliance form within our website. Just put down special notes. Um, we want to practice raid. I mean, that's just one of the ways you can do it, but we are more than happy to do practice raids with anybody because we can really use the word, honestly. And despite the fact that we're working on new raid facilities and whatnot, um, we would definitely love to test those out as we did with the Bast at one point, in which Bast was actually a very... How should I say it? They, they were a pleasure having, you know, as a participant with us. I mean, they were very fair, very considerate of what needs to be applied, what needs to be removed within our bases, because we try to be fair with raid combat. We don't try to, you know... I mean, at one point, we had a very overpowered facility, and we fought Unicom on it. We had people complain about things, but this was just because we were testing everything out. We don't put things in service unless they are fair to both sides. So... That's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> Alright, that actually about wraps up uh, all the questions I had for you. So do you want to do a recruitment message or ask me a question about the community? That kind of thing. Well, honestly, have have you heard about the uh, conflict with Commonwealth and Vast lately? Commonwealth declared war on Vast. Uh, I've seen... Like, General JB sent me a link to the video, but I never actually watched it. Um, <laughs> sorry, JB. <laughs> but, uh, like, uh, that's basically where I'm at with it. I, I thought he was just trying to build hype for his uh, new claim. When you hear the context, Commonwealth declares war on Vaz. How, how does that make you feel? Like, how does it make you feel? Um, let me see. Wasn't there an issue with, uh, didn't, didn't they basically do the same thing back when, uh, the, they were, uh, United Nations? Uh, with the UUF? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the reasons behind it, but I know they, that, they like, know, a lot took place in that they, war. They, they made a public declaration, like, right after they, uh, yeah, like started trying to did that. cut down the yeah. simplify the raid rules, and uh, with them just now uh, coming out with this new kind of rating system, it, it kind of feels like they're pushing that again, like their own mentality a little bit. But I, I mean, you know, more power to them for doing it. But it, it just kind of feels like it's right. been played before. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I mean, I have no problem with either party. I mean, clearly we did practice raids with Vass, and I talked to JV every now and then. But I think this could be one of those ways to influence other clans to, you know, half at it with each other, you know? Because the Halo 5 community at this point, yeah. I mean, in my honest opinion, it seems pretty dry with combat, and we need, you know, summer's right around the corner. I mean, I'm looking outside, it's a beautiful day, and I mean... There are people that I know that are outside of school already. So, I mean, we should be using this time. I mean, if you're outside of school, work on things, get things together, work on your media, do something, you know? I mean, this is what we're trying to do. We've been doing it for the longest time, but now we're just getting the good streak of luck here of, you know, getting more members and actually creating more activity outlets because, you know, we're plenty to throw in game night and etc within the clan because you know i mean i don't expect people to go on the routine training recruit war zone etc like that's all we ever do but i i don't yeah, like it's, it's been played it's like no one actually goes to war with one yeah. another anymore i mean even if it's just like <laughs> a war that has no like actual hostility to the point where people want to destroy each other but, i mean it's good because you're you're expressing you know your demonstration of manpower firepower you're also creating more ways of activity that can be shared across the entire community. That's just how I see it. Well, you remember back in the old days, like 
mm-hmm. reach raids and that kind of stuff. You know, you basically just whipped out your dick, <laughs> smacked somebody across no the face we? with it, let the mushroom cat do, and said, let's go to war. And now it's, you yeah. know, all caught up in politics and everybody kind of spats over Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And no battle actually takes place because they're so caught up in who wants to be the good guy versus, uh, you know, actually going right. out and fighting. You know, they need to realize it's a war game, not a political debate. If you want to go political debate or something like that, go play uh, Phoenix Ride right. or something. And, you, you know, know <laughs> I see it as a good thing, but then again, a bad thing to use politics within, you know, the Halo clan community. I mean, it's good to have a little bit of it, but to the point where we're saturating the entire establishment with politics, it's kind of bad. <laughs> Because you have all these discussions yeah. and trifling arguments, and it's like, why don't we all do something, you know? Like, at the same time, I, I don't have any room to talk because, you know, I'm not, I'm not even ready for anything yet. And, you know, I, I, I see other people that have the potential of doing things, but they're not doing it. You cut out there. I mean, I said that I see certain people that have the potential of doing things. I'm not one of them, obviously, at this point in time, but I do see other people. And I'm glad the Commonwealth and Vast are doing something because, you know, those are two clans that have potential. And clearly, I mean, clearly right. they're duking it out right now as we speak. So, I mean, it's a good thing to see people, you know, hopefully what I see, um, influencing others to do the same thing. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to see, like, you know, a bunch of different factions forming around that. Like, two different communities going at one another. That way they could kind of build up conflict between, you know, between themselves. And that way, once this ends, then it can go on to other people fighting other stuff because they're still butthurt over the thing that happened before. Yeah, the prolonged situation. (laughs) It's like grudges will never get settled. So that's, that's an unfortunate thing. I mean, there are some people that will not be able to, you know, um, cease the existence of a grudge with another clan or a certain individual. Um, for instance, uh, no offense to Lag Link, but Lag Link and Navcom, like he he can't get over things and he says that he dominates Navcom. Like, I, I don't really have anything to say about it, but it's probably one of the busy, excuse me, the biggest examples because, you know, he, he doesn't like Navcom and Navcom doesn't like him, even though Navcom doesn't really see you know his clan and himself has a yeah you it, know. yeah it's it's been kind of since yeah. reach since that another, happened pretty good example um <laughs> century strike with the unsc community like he hates navcom up to this day like even though he doesn't play halo i mean same thing with um other pe- people i mean people that have wronged him or hasn't really you know catered to uh his agenda like he he didn't like them and at one point, I think I was actually one yeah. of those people, because I, I didn't really agree with the whole movement against the, uh, the UNSC community. I actually thought the UNSC community created more diversity, and diversity is a very beautiful thing, especially within a community, because you have people indoctrinating each other with the same old tradition. It, it'll eventually get old, and the entire community would just die out. That's just how I see it. I mean, I would get bored to see the same thing over and over again. But having the UNSC community, it makes things a little bit interesting because it's... The community is a melting pot, right? I mean, we just don't have enough of, you know, that diversity anymore. Because, you know, we don't have the um, Sanghealy community with us anymore because, you know, they're not playing as the Sanghealy characters. We, we don't have that anymore. And it's unfortunate. And I mean, those are one of the few things that I miss about Reach. But then again, I don't like Reach now because, you know, I, I like to move on. That's what my client will always do. We will always move forward. We will always move forward. We will never take a step back, ever. Yeah, I actually don't think that I've played Halo Reach since, uh, I don't know, maybe about three months after Halo 4 came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was all over Halo 4 and then MCC. And then I was all over that, and people were going back to Reach. and. I mean, there was one point where I was deployed back on Reach because I was in the United Union Federation as a lieutenant colonel, and then I was doing assignments with uh, Sentry Echelon at the time, and he was a young officer and everything. I took him under the wing with everything as well as every other officer did. And, you know, he's been in this community for a while now, um, I believe five years, he said, and he's a very good guy. I mean, 
he's a friend. He's someone I worked with, and I have confidence that one day we may work together. Excuse me, work together again. My God, can't even speak. I'm flustered with all these great words. <laughs> But anyway, don't be pulling no damn twenty dollar words out for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not like.、Uh, No offense to strike, I, I don't say big words like "bolumptious" and all those other crazy words that he. Is that even a like word? Like <laughs> like I don't know. Like he says pretty big fucking words sometimes. Like I mean, it's a good thing, but then again, like I, I can't even keep up with him. Like I haven't spoke to him in like two months now, but wherever he is, obviously on Ark Survival, I'm pretty sure he's doing good for himself. All right. So do you want to? Add a recruitment message, or、um, you're gonna wrap this up. Recruitment message. Oh my goodness! If I could just come up with something right here, right now, I so would. But if you guys are, are interested in joining the Armored Federation, we have three subdivisions within our army. We have infantrymen, we have military police, we have armored crew. The armored crew really needs staffing. So if you are interested in using big guns and blowing shit up, message myself. And I will get you into that subdivision. Anybody else that may be interested in an alliance, message me via Kick or Xbox Live, and I will get to you at your convenience, not mine. <laughs> All right. So that about wraps up this interview with Archivex, leader of Armored Federation, and this has been Halo Clans signing out. All right.